mission, you got to listen We pole politicking, it's so dope when it kick in That you can get in, where you fit in We straight pole politicking, the whole squad on the mission You got to listen, you know what this is When we pole politicking, my money long like division I proposition to put a fist in, we straight pole politicking Hey yo, I rise like the sun in the east, running the streets Same people that was coming in peace, some in the beast On the microphone, it's never a long and hard task For God, I'm gonna smash they blow Log and podcast introduction to journalism 101 with federal pole politicking about where I'm from and what I do. What's up? It gotta be good interviewing everybody. You know they probably could take all the blood, sweat, and tears working all them years, putting in 10,000 hours. It empowers careers from the baby and Megan the Stallion and Yo Gotti, high as a kite, jet life, currency in the party with MC Life. J Prince said I rap a lot. Super Saiyan Black Kagarot with a Macintosh laptop in my. Apple Watch, smoking Fraggle Rocks, four eyes, got more lines and hooks than a tackle box. What? The whole squad on the mission, you got to listen. We pole politicking, it's so dope when you kick in. That you can get in where you fit in. We straight pole politicking. The whole squad on the mission, you got to listen. You know what this is when we pole politicking. My money long like the vision, I proposition to put a fist in. We straight pole politicking. Welcome back to PolePolitikin.com. Your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you check us out on YouTube, Twitch, Apple, Spotify, Amazon. One, two, one, two. I'm in the place to be with Q Reeves. How you doing, bro? Yes, sir. I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to have you on. Like I said, one of my homies, uh, because I'm into this stuff, like, um, just a little bit about me. Like, I did, uh, like, 2018, I did a past life regression. And then I had went and saw Esther. I'm a fan of Abraham and all them. So I was studying her work. Uh, I studied a lot of Seth. Uh, you know about you heard about Seth before? Uh, give me a little breakdown. Well, it's like basically like Abraham is like a lot of people. You know, a lot of people. Uh, it's people that have entities talking through them. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying it's a couple people I was listening to, but one of my homies was like, "Oh, you should check out him," and I was like. I checked out Q and I was like, yeah, he got cool stuff. So I was like, let me hit him up and see if he reached back. So I'm actually glad you hit me back. I'm like, shit, I, I like what you're putting down, man. Like, I was at my wife here and I was like, um, I'm not really hearing nothing that you say that I'm like disagreeing with. Like, everything you say, um, my whole thing is if you can explain it and it makes sense, I, I cool. Even if I don't agree, agree, but the, everything, even how I was listening, um, I heard the one you was doing when you said a cold and a cold. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> I'm actually in yeah. security, so it was really making sense to me. I was like, oh, shit. So, yeah, I just want to know more about you, man. I don't even know where to start because I know you got a lot of game for the people. But I guess the main thing, just like, you know, just tell us where you're from and how did you fall into this knowledge? I no doubt, no doubt. Once again, happy to be here. Shouts out to you. Shouts out to you. Uh, we want to... Uh, I guess we want to acknowledge uh, where I was born. Uh, New Haven, Connecticut uh, is where I'm from. Um, New Haven, Connecticut is where Yale is. Uh, the word Yale is also connected to the word Yule. And of course, you know, the Yule goat or the Yule holiday that we just had uh, in December. Uh, this is a pagan ritual to something known as the Yule goat. Um, uh, Pumpus is another title or term for it. But nevertheless, coming from New Haven, Connecticut, there's a lot of occult things just embedded in our city. Uh, there's a pentagram logo on our green. Um, uh, New Haven, Connecticut is where the skull and bones are. <laughs> so you just get an idea like me being born in this. I, I was born in Yale Hospital. <laughs> mm. Like, to give a to give a, a a real breakdown of how how deep this occult stuff goes, so being from New Haven, Connecticut, I kind of was uh, introduced to occultism uh, as a kid. So basically, I was a exceptional student, so I was able to go to a program called Grant, and this was done at Yale. Mm. And like eight nine years old, 
being able to travel Yale and see some of the interesting stuff there. One of my counselors brought me to the Skull and Bones building. And he was a huge conspiracist. He was like, man, they're eating babies in there. And I'm like, get out of here. But he would say all kind of crazy stuff, which always kind of speak, sparked my interest. I then remember when I was in high school and I was a freshman and I was at my friend's house. And he lived maybe about a block away from Yale. And I heard them doing like a hazing, but it was like a ritual. And they were like, Oh, hell. And they were like bugging. And this mm. is before we like have phones recorded and stuff. So it ain't like we could record it. We just just listening to it tripping out. So just growing up around all these weird things in New Haven, Connecticut, made me want to get deeper. Uh, I had a friend who had an alleged suicide from New Haven, Connecticut. Now, peep game to this crazy stuff. My boy disappeared on a Wednesday. They allegedly found his body on Saturday, but it took six months for them to identify him. Mm. They he was so distorted that there was no ability for them to tell who he was. And keep in mind, he's a 19 year old, but man, they thought he was a 56 year old. Wow. They also acknowledged his tattoos that literally said his name on one wrist and his birth date on the other. It was just mad little weird stuff about it. I was like, man, this, this ain't really adding up. So I started to like look into the other side for answers. And it got me into salvia. Now, salvia devonarum, that's the technical term for it. It's an herb that Mayans used to smoke, sages used to smoke. Mm. It's a, it would use like ayahuasca. It's an herb that they would use like peyote. Well, peyote ain't really a herb per se. So, so they were shrooms. They would use these different hallucinogens to go into the other side. Well, I ended up partaking in one of these hallucinogens and ended up being pulled into another reality. Now, I've tried other hallucinogens in my life, and most of them do very similar things. It amplifies your current environment. You might see things in your environment. You might see the walls sh shift, wave. But I've never been taken out of my reality hmm. uh, except salvia. And when I was taken out of my reality, I ended up seeing a goat being, like half goat, half man. And it had an attitude that I was there. And what blew my mind was I was still me. I still had my body. I still had my attitude. I still had my mannerisms. And what blew my mind was that I'm in another world right now. You cannot tell me I'm not. I can give you all the details of this world. But yet I know my body is tripping out right now in my room. <laughs> I'm not really here, but I'm really here. here. Yeah. What blew mm -hmm. my mind. I was like, oh, okay, so now you're really telling me that death ain't what we think it is because there's no way that I'm literally here right now and my body's not here right now for you to tell me death is it. Like, it, it, that don't even, that don't even, that don't even connect. Like, I went somewhere with, with real life creatures that knew who I was and had an attitude with me being there. Like, process that. Like, it wasn't like, and, and fairies and welcome and it was like what the fuck are you doing here you're not supposed to be here and then this motherfucker pulled out a flute and blew the flute on some do 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 and every time he hit that note bro i tell you i kid you not every chakra started to like and like it'll hit you like a and i was getting hit like Like, I heard my body making these sounds. And on that last one, bro, it made me go into what some call the death ritual. And that's basically when you process your life, when you go through death. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I had to process everything in my life. And what it told me was that none of this shit you processing can come with you.
I was talking about bills. I was talking about buying homes. I was talking about my kids. I literally was talking about everything here. And every time I tried to bring something with me, it made me reset. It would not let me bring it with me. And something just came to me and it was like, let go. It was so kind. It was so sweet. I, male, woman, that don't really matter. Something was just like, you're not going to make it out of here if you don't let go. And when I let go, bro, I was like two things at once. And there's no way of explaining what it feels like to be two things at once unless you experience it. But I was a footprint and I was a giant. So I not only was the footprint of this giant, it's marker, it's residue, it's remnants, it's proof. I was also the giant and it took a step. And I remember when I got into the body of my giant, I looked to the left of me and I looked to the right of me and I was like in an endless field with other giants. Mm. But what blew my mind was the other giants couldn't move. They would move. But think of it like a sloth. No. <laughs> That's how they were moving. And this told me that we have gods here on this planet. Titans, giants, inside of people. And they cannot get them in motion. They can't even prove to themselves they're a footprint. So after going through that and coming back here, I was like, I got to do something. <laughs> I got to do something. So what I decided to do was get into quantum healing, hypnosis technique, QHHT. I decided to uh, follow a few of the different practitioners and they let me practice on them. And they loved how talented I was and natural I was with this. But when they told me that there's rules to this, Okay, what's, what's the rules? Well, you can't call on angels. <laughs> what do you mean I can't call on angels? The last three regressions I did, I had to call on Gabriel and Mike. And this was like, just natural. Like, like it just happened. Like, And of course, there's other names for them. But my point was, when I needed someone to help me with communication, I called on Gabriel. He is the angel of communication. He was always the voice of God. So if I need to interpret God, if I need something to interpret the expressions of God, I'm calling on this entity and you're telling me I can't. Mm. So what happens when I regress someone and they're speaking in an ancient language because they remember themselves being a native from 10 lives ago and they're speaking a language I completely don't understand and I'm supposed to get them back to themselves so they can go be a mom to their kids. But you're telling me I can't help them right now. I'm supposed to just do the foo-foo. And what's the foo-foo? Just show them their past lives. And fuck that. That ain't enough. That's not enough to show a person. I can show you what you did yesterday. That don't mean you're going to get everything. Sometimes you got to see who was affecting your yesterday. That's what I get to. Letting people see what's inside them. And once they can see what's inside them, boy... It's like a whole nother realm. It's like a whole nother world I was exposed to. I had a client who had gout. He did every modality to try to fix his gout. I mean, everything the doctor said, everything the Reiki lady said, everything the herbologist said. I mean, everything. He spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to try to figure out his gout. He finally went to... A psychic and a psychic said, you ever tried hypnosis? He was like, hypnosis? She was like, yeah, why don't you see if someone can hypnotize you to make you forget about the pain? Hmm. That's how he found me. I regress this man. Do you want to know what caused this man's gout? What? Dude, I can't make this shit up. I'd be like, this world is so crazy. This is what I found out. He told me in his own words, that there is a slave inside of me. So I said, how do you know? He says, he looks like a slave. I said, let me talk to him. So now I'm speaking directly to the slave through the individual. 
understand. This is how he starts talking. Mm. This is not how my client was talking. I was I was trying to get to my, my missus. I was trying to get to my missus. I said, okay, slow down. What happened? This man told me he was from the 1700s that he came here with the French. He said that, quote unquote, slavery has been running rampant through the Americas since the early 1600s. It was just other countries bringing their subservience over. And in New Orleans, they have a huge French correlation. So he came with the French. He said that he was trying to run away with his girlfriend and they caught him. And not only did they catch him, they cut his foot off. Now this is Kunta Kente shit is deep because these some of these pakakus we call them crackers because they're literally like crackers like crack her, crack like an egg, <laughs> crack it open <laughs> spillage <laughs> get a little spillage <laughs> anywhere um, I'll tell you so So what, what he told me was he came here with the French they cut his foot off. They said they then told him to go. Mm. Go ahead. Go go find her. He was gone for three days before he bled out. Because, of course, he helped himself. And he said he tried to go to the local um, the Ruha, witch. There's witches during this time. He went to the local witch to try to heal him. And they were helping him for the last three days to the point where he could have potentially one leg and all got his butt up to his girl. They captured him again. They were actually watching him through the whole process. Mm. They hung him from a specific tree that is a park right now in New Orleans. My client fell asleep at the tree he got hung on. Mm. Leap opened himself up to be connected to this slave. And from that moment, he was dealing with gout. I had to explain to the slave that you have passed, that she is gone into another space and that you are stuck inside of a being in 2021. And after explaining it, like, like really explaining it to it, it was willing to remove itself from my client. He didn't have gout after that. Yeah, it's cold. I believe that stuff. Like I told you, I did a past life where to myself. Well, tell me about yours. Um, she actually got. I recorded it, man. I can send it to you, but um, it was like I just saw myself in my past life. I actually saw myself as a. Uh, I don't know if it was an Indian, but I know I had warrior shit on because I'm actually a marine right now. I was a, I was a past marine in my past life, but uh. I just saw myself with uh with uh like uh military stuff on. At first I saw myself on a mountain and I just saw myself chilling. But then I, I kept going back deeper and I saw myself like uh like on a bed, but then I saw my family around me and I ended up seeing two kids. And that was like I ain't have no kids at the time, but now I actually got two kids. So I was like, damn. Mm. Um yeah, I had did that one like I wanna say like 2018. But it like like you said, he hypnotized me. Then he told me just keep going back, keep going back. And then he also he was like, "Do you see a light?" And then um, he was like, he was asking me, "Who would I see? Do I see anybody? Do I want to talk to him?" Then I kept going back. And then at first he was like, "What's her name?" And I was, I was like, "Sally." And at first I I couldn't think who's fucking Sally was. Who fucking Sally? Then when I got home, I was like, oh, my auntie, my grandma, my great grandma named Sally Bell. So I was like, oh. <laughs> so that was like what I was doing. I was like, Sally, I didn't know who Sally was. So I was talking to her too. So yeah, it was cool, man. I actually liked it. Um, it was dope. Yeah. Yeah. So when I got into doing the past lives, <clears throat> I started to realize that not only you can go backwards, you can go forward. 
Mm. So the best way I kind of broke it down was this. What we deem to be ancestors are our past selves in animal form. Mm. Now, we've seen ourselves as past lives in human form. And what I realized is all the different human forms of ourselves is kind of still playing the same game. Mm. It's a reincarnation of a different, similar body to get the same job done. Right. So I go beyond that, when do we do something different? That's when I started to say, I wonder if I can get the animal. See, natives believe that every human has a animal connected to them. They call them animal totems. And that if you could discover the animal that you're connected to, it's kind of like you knowing what pack you're connected to. Those are native cultures that consider themselves a part of the wolf pack. The reason why they consider themselves wolf packs is because they travel in groups. Right. Uh, 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 hunt at night. Those that are part of the ant group, they like to use dirt. They like to create mounds. There's mounds that have been created into huts. Now, it's, it's, it's to, to describe one's skill, to describe one's ability. So this is why in ancient times, you had a lot of animal correlations. It's because they wanted to not only connect to their present self, which can be various humans. How do you connect to your past self? That's discovering the animal entity or energy you're associated to. Now, some are birds, some are mammals, some are amphibians, some are are what some would consider extraterrestrials. Thoth was a bird, Anubis is a dog. Hmm. These are these are ancient gods that have been depicted and seen as animals. So this is why you have your word like ancestor, animal, alien, all they start with kind of A, because it's trying to explain to you the beginning. Mm. Now, what's crazy is we consider a animal a alien, but this is what I've kind of concluded. What we consider alien have been broken down into two forms. You have something known as a gray. You have something some refer to as reptilians. That's an alien species. But let's just kind of break it down with that. All right. So you have reptilians and you have grays. You then have the term interterrestrial and extraterrestrial. Mm -hmm. Now, anything that's considered an interterrestrial to me is considered connected to the past. Anything that's considered outer terrestrial or extraterrestrial getting added to a present kind of like connected to What's to come? The future. So I, I started to think like, is it possible that these grays are future? These reptiles are past. I then started to think, what if the reptiles are us from the past? What if the grays are us from the future? Mm. And we're literally dealing with ourselves through these different entities. Now, it don't just stop with reptiles, nor does it just stop with greys. <laughs> uh, you know how some consider Thor a superhuman? He's an alien. He represents future. Now, the reason why I kind of make that suggestion, have you heard of the theory that humans are supposed to develop superpowers? Have you seen hear that theory or have that has that kind of came across your timeline that in the spiritual community, they wholeheartedly believe that something is coming that's going to like activate superpowers to the human species. Have you ever heard of this? No, nah, but I believe you can do that yourself. You don't got to wait on nothing. Thank you, bro. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And what are they waiting they, on? Uh, so the theory is that something so traumatic and so unbelievable has to happen that triggers or activates something dormant inside of the human species. Hmm. Call it third strand DNA, 
some call it uh, dark cells, a dark DNA science calls it. It's just something. It's kind of like you ever think about when a mother has to experience something as terrible as like her baby being trapped under a car. Right, right, and you right. hear they pick it up. Car up. Extreme experiences have to happen for you to be able to unlock this superpower. Mm. Now, we ain't been through these extremes yet as humanity, so then that has to be a futuristic event. So then when Holly Weird, Hollywood what is showing me Thor, showing me the Avengers, or showing me X-Men, you're showing me the future. And this is the theory in the spiritual community. Now, have I gotten things to confirm some of these theories inside of people? I'll say that something turned humanity off. And if something can turn humanity off, they can turn humanity on. And you know that humanity's turned off because we're not building pyramids. We're, we we haven't even been able to figure out how to do what Nikola Tesla did. Right. We don't even know, like the past stuff, we don't know how to do. That's the crazy stuff. The stuff they were doing. Yeah. Um, I would say, man, I'm actually, uh, the stuff you're talking about is the stuff I'm actually on, man, because I actually was studying how they was talking about a lot of giants live in the, in the mountains, or on top of mountains. You hear anything like that before? Like um, like you were saying the giants on Earth? Yeah, so so there's a hierarchy of giants. Yep. There are some giants that are large as comets. Mm. Imagine and remember space is vast. I know y'all used to ships. You think <laughs> a, a, a a celestial body that has figured out how to travel from one space to another space, can't land. And what you deem landing may look like a mountain. And this mountain was at time alive. Mm. And over time has of course deceased and we're looking at the bones or remnants All of right. something. But some has considered the trees and the mountains to be a part of a very, very large species that no longer moves about this planet anymore. And that something has uh, transpired to get them to stop. It's not like they're not capable of waking back up. Some say the giants are made out of mountains. So what you're looking at is the back of a giant sleep dug into the earth. You don't even get to see all of it. Some say when you're looking at these trees, you're looking at a giant species. Some of these trees hit 100, 300 feet, but they don't move anymore. So I actually asked the question, why? Like, why aren't, aren't these things in motion anymore? They said that there's a system on this planet to keep things into a certain grid. So this grid is associated to dolphins, whales, trees, mountains, um, artificial bodies of water and real bodies of water. Mm. Uh, when I say artificial, you know, they pop up lakes and, and, and create rivers and, you know, all that stuff. Um, and what this does is this keeps Earth in a certain speed, a certain degree of awareness. Now, colonizers discovered this information. This is why in Japan, they have a ritual where they kill off dolphins. This is why you're clearing forests in uh, South America. Uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, Amazon. The yeah, right for it. Yeah. yeah, right. They're tearing it down. I'm saying they're doing this because they're trying to accelerate or speed up awareness or speed up time. And the only way you can really affect the time frame of this planet is to affect certain special things on this planet that are associated with us being in the level of awareness that we are. I'll tell you what the whales and the uh, dolphins associate to. So, 
They said that a long time ago, there was a frame of existence where there was two superpowers that existed. The superpower known as Lumeria and the superpower known as Atlantis. It is said that the whales are transformations of a dragon-like species. And this is why they still maintain such a large statue. Some of the largest creatures on this planet, as were dragons as well. And you call them dinosaurs, different terms to, to identify these things. But I do believe in a time that there was a dragon, unicorns. I do believe that these entities did exist on this planet as well. And it is said that as they started to rid or kill off these dragons, some of them developed the ability to stay into the water. And over time, they kind of morphed or transformed into our whales. Mm. So the dragons were really important in the days of old because there was two ways that humanity was understanding luminescence or light. You had some entities that dwelled on land that was able to emit a light. You have some entities that dwell in the waters they have to go so deep, they develop bioluminescence. That's another form of luminescence, shining, light. And then you have the light that comes from above. And what do I mean with the light that comes from above? Some consider the first fire that the Kakaku discovered came from thunder, lightning. Came from a bolt of lightning. This bolt of lightning hit a bush near their cave. This helped them develop oh, fire. We don't got to eat things raw. And da, 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 da. <laughs> this is why they praise Thor and Odin, these lightning bolt deities. This is why in the Illuminati right now, they do little lightning bolt symbols. And Jeffrey Bo uh, Bowie got the, the, the thunderbolt on his eye. And it's all to show that this is what brought them luminescence, that they never was able to discover it from the deep, nor was they able to get it out the land some supernatural entity or supernatural construct because they still don't understand thunder and lightning until today. I want you to understand that lightning is so strong that if it struck something or when it struck something, it's able to produce a finite amount of antimatter. Antimatter is what the, the Heizon Collider, that big circle thing they're doing down in Sweden, combining things. So this Billion dollar operation just to produce this little finite amount of antimatter is being produced all the time around the world with thunder, with mm. lightning. My bad, with lightning. So they want to acknowledge their their luminescence, but they don't shine. It's not about them shining. It's about them understanding how to reflect the shine. See, the dragon never taught you to reflect it or, or, or mimic it. I'm sorry. That's the better word, to mimic it. They're being taught to mimic fire. And I'm going to explain this in a second because fire is associated to soul. Soul, solar. Hmm. Para, fire. They are mimicking Ra. So all their and they and they and they 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 have a philosophy of mimicking fire compared to a chosen or 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 original race that had to, the ability to produce it for themselves. Now here's what I'm going to help you understand. We have the ability to use the power of chi. Now we call it prana. In uh, 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 Norse mythology, they call it Vrail. Just different names to call it. But a system of energy within you that's able to do unimaginable things. Now, when you saw the uh, old psychics in the 1800s and they released, they were released this ectoplasma. You ever seen any of them videos where it's like this smoke or mist coming out of people's mouth, this is a form of it. 
This is a form of, of, of channeling one's chi. The difference is they cannot release theirs through their pores like, like a, a, a melanated species can. So they tend to release their ectoplasma or chi straight through their mouth. Straight throw up, regurgitation, ecto, uh, 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 I've seen it as, as, as a smoke. I've seen it as, some refer to it as like an ether-like form. It almost takes on images sometimes when they emit this stuff. But I may explain what that is. That's them dealing with entities that are of the light, once again, mimicking something. And once they put it inside them, it can't stay in them too long. So mm. it got a, like a volcano. And it erupts out of them un, uncontrollably sometimes, just like a volcano. But let me not go too far off on a tangent. <laughs> so, so those that discovered the flame through thunder or through lightning, saying thunder through lightning often do not understand the ability to control or influence self so those that discovered luminescence through lightning will tell you to install a thermostat in your house and they'll tell you to install a thermostat in your house because they don't have the ability to warm self they have to use a system that's mimicking something real. Now, our ancient brothers and sisters didn't have no thermostat, yet they dealt with all extreme amounts of temperature. It's because they were just like the monks up there in the Hindu uh, uh, Himalayan mountains with, with bare skin and this freezing cold, using the power of sound and the power of meditation and the power of focus to be able to tell self we will warm up and instead of doing that on an instinctual level which is like what the dragon would have taught you how to charge oneself up so that you can use this flame so that you can use this light no they have not learned those principles they have learned the principle of i'm gonna just turn the thermostat up and because we were captured by a people who said I'm just going to turn the thermostat up. We now just turn the thermostat up. Forgetting that we have a gift inside of us that we have to discover. I did a, a, a song where I said, uh, uh, lost people of the dragon, but yet in life we keep on dragging. It's because we don't really understand the power of our own light, our own fire. That's all I mean when I'm saying we are a dragon species. I don't even care about the physical aspect of it. I'm talking about in self-awareness terms, in self-application terms. If I was to say I'm of the dragon tribe, what would I be meaning? It's meaning that I'm not using no outside sources to provide self-light. <laughs> I'm not using no outside sources to produce self-warmth. I'm not using no outside sources to produce flight. This is the philosophies of a dragon. And when you have something like that potentially moving around in physical form, those are lessons. Remember, we learned everything from these animals. It is us observing and watching these animals. We figured out how to do what we do. We didn't understand the concept of, of a dam until we watched the beaver. That's why we call it a dam. Uh -huh. Everything, everything we know in this life has either been passed off from the dead or we've learned it from the animal life. And this is why I often say the animals connect to our past because if we don't really understand ourselves in the, in the present, you ain't about to run to the future. You go run to the quote unquote past, which is these animals. And you can learn a lot through these different creatures through these different constructs. So, I want to ask yeah. you about, um, about what you think about cats and dogs. All right, so, I realized that cats and dogs are 
playing with religion. Mm. And it's because within a word, you can discover a level of truth. But you can't get lost to the words. You got to know that when you're reading a word, you're also reading it in reverse. It's because on a subconscious level, let's just tell you this is how your brain plays a funny trick. The left side of your brain reads it. D-O-G, dog, I know what that is. Woof, woof. But then the right side of your brain reads it as well and says, oh, God, I know what that is too. Dog backwards is God. I know what a God is too. But why I have to be a God that's a dog? I know what dogs are. Those are submissive. They're not wolves. Their nature has been changed. Hmm. Okay. So then we're dealing with dogs, God backwards, which is a submissive construct because a dog is a submissive entity. Go see if there's drugs in this car. I mean, it literally got to do what man tells it to do. Man's best friend or man's servant. Is it is is it man's best friend because they don't tell you no? Right. I kind of see how these, once again, these cockacoos, I'm just going to use the word cockacoo. It's interesting how these cockacoos love these dogs. And I'd be thinking, do you love these dogs because you love these dogs or you love these dogs because they subservient to you and you ain't got slaves no more? Right. Hmm. I ask that question sometimes. Now, not all. Not all. On top of the fact, I don't even think a cockatoo really even know what a cockatoo is. Mm-hmm. So, I said, okay, so if the dog has some correlation to God, can the cat? I said, does the cat have anything to do with religion? I said, holy shit, of course it does. They're called Catholics. Mm. They're called holistic cats. Now, speaking of the French earlier, they buried their dead in catacombs. Hmm, there's that cat again. Catholics, catacombs. I then said, what? quote unquote religion is older Christianity or is there something older than that and then of course I fall into Egypt right or enough there's another cat I said okay so when I realized that cats associate to Christ because Catholics is entities that follow the teachings and principles of Christ. So so what does Christ and cats got to do with anything? And then it hit me. Where does the Christ story come from? Well, it's really a Sumerian text about two brothers known as Enki and Enlil. And these two brothers were also referred to as Two Panthers. Mm. Panthera is the real name. And these Pantheras, these two Black Panthers, fought each other. And when they fought each other, one of them sacrificed their brother over a cliff, thus becoming the new Christ, the Antichrist. Until the, 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 the brother that was thrown over the cliff resurrected. That's the resurrection of Christ. Now, of course, you've seen Black Panther. Right. This is what we're talking about. But this was actually written in Sumerian text 6,000 years ago about these two brothers, these two Panthers. So I said, oh, shit. Okay, so this, 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 then it's starting to get a little deeper. Because, all right, so what you're telling me is that these Black Panthers is associated to a Christ and an Antichrist. So you're going to have a time of these two pans. That's now, you see, you got to get even deeper now. You can't just stop at Panthera or Panther. You got to stop at 
here's another name for it, Pangaea. That's what you call Pangaea. Pangaea used to be all the continents connected together. Hmm. Why the hell is Pangaea a combination of two things? Pan, which is a goat god in Greek mythology. If you've ever seen the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, that's Pan, the little deity that greets the children when they come through the wardrobe. Hmm. That's Pan. With the little flute he be playing, uh, have little goat legs, uh, body all open. This is Pan. And Pan is very, very important because there's a secret name for Pan. But anyway, before I, I, I get you there. <laughs> so these two Pans go to war with each other. And each of them have an era or a time frame that they get to rule. Just like you saw in the movie. In Black Panther, the Antichrist ruled. And in him ruling, he opened up. What did they call that? Um, their world? What was their world called? Wakanda. Oh, yeah. He opened up Wakanda. Remember, Wakanda was closed off to the known world. Right. It wasn't a, how you go? Listen, you cannot. It's like a virus. It'll never be the same. You might rebound, but you ain't never going to be the same once something outside of you enters you. Mm. You will never be the same. I don't care if it's a half a percentage difference. It's still a difference. And the fact that he was an outsider that entered their world, there's no way that that outside won't continue seeping in. It's a crack. He cracked their dome. And once he cracked it, they knew that the outside was going to seep in, so they need to now expose themselves to the world. Well, this is what I believe we're in right now. I believe that there was a specific time that there was a rule. And this rule was unbothered unchallenged shit unaware but something cracked their world and now we are seeping in now i call this the world of the gods and goddesses in this world not only do they have advanced technology they have ai mm. <laughs> And this is why AI is emerging in the level of acceleration that it is now. Because once again, just like Black Panther, they opened themselves up. I want to know what opened them up. I don't know if it was potentially the vid. <laughs> I don't know that time frame. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't know if it was lack of praise or awareness that they were getting on a, you know, some say that this is what Hollywood does. They do rituals and stuff for these individuals. But what happens when everybody at home? <laughs> you ain't snatch the stripper off the pole on Thursday. <laughs> you can't get little Johnny's playing in the alley. Everyone home. Hey, I'm saying speaking of codes and, and um you was talking about AI, I just found out they got a they got a website. It's called like I think chat GPA, and it writes your term paper in two minutes. Dude. But then some fool, some fool sit there and made a code so that the teachers can find out if you wrote it off that shit. I'm like, why you do that? <laughs> he was an, he was an Asian man. Yeah, I'm like, what you doing, bro? You messing up the oh, game already? Shit. Asian, yep. Asian, Asian. Uh, exactly. Asian, 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 Asian. Woo. Caucasian. Wait, they come from the Asians? So there's a Kakaku Mountain and an Asian. So what happens when an Asian lands on the Kakaku Mountains and discovers a new people that's inside of these caves? Let me ask you a question. Do you know where uh, the Ark landed? Where? The Bible. They say it probably, it probably be somewhere in Africa, right? They good. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, um, where did the ark land? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you talking about like Noah's Ark? Yep, because it ain't even called that no more. Yeah, where did it land? How Turkey ain't Africa, bro. <laughs> they say Turkey? Yeah, the Kakaku Mountains, bro. Hmm. <laughs> The Kakaku Mountains, bro. Noah's Ark landed in the Kakaku Mountains, and that ain't the only time something landed in the Kakaku Mountains. The the Bible mentions them twice. Mm. It's a lot. It's a lot of deep shit in this shit. When you really start stepping back and be like, "What the hell?" So you, you make. Which? I would say you say you make music too. Yeah. What kind of music are you? Are you doing hip hop or? A little bit of everything. I got a little bit of music. I say, what you think about how the music is right now, as far as with the hip hop music, or yeah, I, where we at with music right now is we used to be the voice of our ancestors. Mm. So when all I want to say is that they don't really care about us. That's the ancestors speaking. When they say fuck the police. This ain't just you saying fuck the police. It's your slave great granddaddy who've been oppressed by this new age coon force that we call the police. It's 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 a collective of so many entities speaking through us. That's why that shit was so powerful. That's why it woke up so many people. This is why hip hop became the most dominant thing in the world. But once they realized that the ancestors were speaking, they say, yeah, no, this is too powerful. We're gonna have to silence them. You really think we about to let, we didn't let, the, we didn't let these niggas talk 300 years ago. The hell we think we about to let these niggas talk now for? On a beat? <laughs> like, fuck out of here. <laughs> Not only, not only, not only are we going to make it where they don't even want to rap about this stuff no more, we go fuck with the frequencies so that we know that the dead ride in on certain hertz, on certain frequencies, and that we're go we know that you're now not even going to be able to kind of send out that frequency. You can record it, <laughs> but it got to go through our system. You got to upload your music to us. Napster, upload your music to us and we will put it. Now you can download it from us. Now you can download it at iTunes, Spotify. You can download it from us. But it got to come through us. Yep. It's the same thing like when we used to with CDs, because me and you old school. So, like, we used to go into the CD store and the same CD had like three different versions. Like, what the hell? What? They got the $10 one. Then you're talking about like this deluxe. And then you talk about this one got like the acoustics and Dolby Digital on this one. They fucked around and did give us the high quality stuff. But it was expensive. We usually just buy the tapes. We didn't even want the CDs at a time when the CDs were available. So I'm saying that for the elite, they kind of gave them this stuff. But for the average Joe, they were trying to remove it from us more and more and more until the until the until it got to the point where uh uh, we didn't even desire it no more. We weren't interested in it no more. So today's music lacks existence. It lacks history. And uh, uh, it, it has to do with, it, it, it's, it's, it's getting us to the point where they don't want us to be, I guess we called it like the culture. Yeah. Like the culture is disappearing. Because you can't have culture and singularity. <laughs> you can't have culture and their version of oneness. Because in our culture, fuck you. That was part of our culture. We might say that to you, but I mean it don't mean we don't love you. It it don't it don't mean I'm not going to be there for you if you call me. Your butt getting in jail. I mean, any of that stuff. I'm here. But not only does AI not understand that, newer people 
who haven't existed as long as other people may not understand that. So they look at some of the things that we do as toxic. They've always did. And they saw us popping out of a bush wearing a, a, a skeleton mass of our ancestors. They right. thought something. So they've been trying to quote unquote fix us forever. And the quote unquote fix us is associated to us being a part of them, which is what they refer to as singularity of oneness. Hmm. So, so I was going to say, man, we're going to wrap it up. We've been talking for a while, man, but is there anything you want to uh, lead the listeners with? Man, just uh, take every moment uh, as if you have eyes on you. And I say that for like Every time you get angry, there's ancestors inside you waiting to see how you handle it. Mm. Trying to figure out, should they change their ways? Because I might learn something new through you. So before you're about to get angry, before you're about to react, before you're about to do something, in Christianity, they say God is watching. I kind of take it a step further and say your past is watching, your ancestors is watching, your future is watching, aliens is watching, God is watching. There's so many eyes on us because humanity is such perfected chaos that there's unlike anything like this in any other existences. So because we are so rare, and this is why there's so many of us here, See, I also thought about that. I don't want to keep going, but I also thought about that. Why there's so many of us <laughs> We're right here. And it makes me come to the conclusion that there are, say there's 50 billion species in this world. And just like we watch butterflies <laughs> and we watch all these other creatures, what if things watched us? And they're watching us to see how we represent situations and experiences that they could never handle, mm -hmm. that they could never they could never go through. So just kind of pay attention to um to hey, your action. I was thinking that too. What if they watching us like how we how we be playing Sims? That's how they be watching us. <laughs> they be watching us just like the Sim game, just watching this shit. Yeah, I feel like uh, shit. They they said that there were 1700 known uh planets that resemble Earth, and they feel like there's a percentage of them that have the ability to zoom right into Earth and see what we do. This is what science said. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. I would say, so you think it's other, um, I guess, uh, forms of life on those planets? I do. I do. Um, um, I, I've even communicated to something from the Taurus constellation and the uh, Eye of Taurus, known as Aldebaran. And I spoke to these entities known as Aldebaranians. And they are the idea of where Spartans come from. Very aggressive warrior like entities that carry uh horns or bull bull horns on their head and they uh they connect to certain spirits on this planet and they said that certain humans on this planet are really just receivers and communications to other species and they talk to each other through us through our actions <laughs> Through what we rap, what we eat, mm. pretty deep. Yeah, and then um, one of my final questions I'm gonna say, how do? Cause that's this one of my questions, like how do you navigate through um life or just the the matrix of life, like working and all that, without you seeming like crazy? Cause anytime you talk to somebody else that really don't know what's going on, they might think you you the one bugging and shit. So how do you? How are you able to navigate through life? No. Well, I'm on who I tell this information to. <laughs> that's that's one. Um, I still am pretty good at making people go, hmm. So I, I continue to kind of work on dropping those little eggs. Um, sometimes you get so excited with these downloads, so excited with this information, you just want to and bust it out there to those that are not in the know. 
And they often would look at us like we crazy or 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 side eye us. So I hit a girl with, you know, when she's saying, she, "Oh, I got cramps." I know you blame that man yet? And they're like, "What?" And I'd be like, "It is called a menstruation." <laughs> The hell? Why is man in menstruation? Yeah. Makes you make things to make you go, hmm. Mm. Look, look at you. It's like, what the hell? Mm. Menopause. Yeah. So I do my best to just try to like drop small little teasers. <laughs> that way, uh, it's hard for them to argue or or question some of the stuff that I say. And then outside of that, I realized how uh influence human the human species is, and in my personal belief system, I believe that a good 75, 80% of humans' existence is them existing through other beings, other entities. So if I'm, if, if you did something to piss me off, it may not even be you. It may be something that possessed you, and I'm not about to feed it. Mm. And it, it's easier for me not to be mad at you. Yeah, then Next, I I meant to say this earlier before I forgot. I was going to say, um, man, it's like the word that's been coming up in a lot of my interviews all the time now is algorithm. Mm-hmm. So why would you just talk on that for a little bit? I know you got something to say on that. Yeah, well, what AI is doing right now is it is typecasting everyone. It is putting everyone in its own algorithm. And of course, these social media platforms are extensions of AI. Mm. And it's it's basically separating those that are divergent. This is why there was a, a movie called Divergent. They are separating those that are divergent versus those that are compliant. And it has a lot to do with those that took the vaccine. It has a lot to do with uh, uh, what we search what we um what we text each other <laughs> they're really monitoring every process of our existence to really figure out are you one that's going to have to be eliminated are you one that's going to have to be looked at closer are you one that's going to be a uh, uh helpful um that's the thing too so before i i just sit there and scare everyone um you have a gift of imagination. And this is something that AI doesn't have. So if I was to sit there and tell AI a story, and a story that it cannot pull out of anyone's freaking web page or anything like that, do you know how valuable that is? It don't even gotta be a fucking real story. But the fact is you can out your ass, come up with something creative. All AI is is mimicking something that exists already. Right. So you gotta get good at creating new stuff. Now, us as melanated people, we haven't had a goddamn chance to create anything. So we should have a lot of shit in the tuck. <laughs> anything that we kind of did get to create, they stole it from us. So do you think we're going to continue creating? We kind of go to chill on that for a little bit if we know how they are. But that don't mean we ain't got it in us. So those that have the ability to be creative, those that are able to balance left brain and right brain, left brain logic, right brain creativity, and to allow both to kind of come out and exist in this new age world, you're going to be high commodity. Mm. Divergent, uh, we just going to have to put you in a different place than, you know, the, the NPCs <laughs> first, first, the first those that are cattle in a sense. And this is why they're going to divide and compartmentalize America in our coming future. No, but, we'll... uh, but yeah, algorithm basically is, in my view, AI placing people in specific uh, categories. Mm, yeah, my home, it was the guy I was interviewing earlier. He was talking about like, they get mad when you know how to break that. Well, a lot of people say this. They get mad when you know how to break the algorithm. Yeah, all right. So easiest way to break the algorithm. All right, so in the movie, uh, all all things everywhere, all at once. Um, they explain the secret into tapping into a multiverse, mm. and this is what we have to get good at doing. And what that means is doing things that can often seem 
out of normality. So, for example, Young Thug put a dress on a few years back. Why did he do that? Because he's breaking the algorithm. Mm. He's something that is, he's fucking a, a thug in charge of YSL. He's got gang. He is the head gang. <laughs> wearing this damn uh, 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 lamb looking like Bo Peep, looking like Mary Bo Peep. Right. Breaking the algorithm. How about this? It's freezing cold outside. Might be it's, it's shit. It's wintertime right now. All right. Whoever feeling frisky or feeling like they want to break the algorithm, when's the last time you ran barefoot in some snow? You wouldn't. You haven't. Do that shit. It's you go to then realize, like, whoa, what the hell? I, I just shifted something. Like my timeline's different now. Damn, what the hell just happened? You got to realize this is a simulation as well. And this simulation is following an algorithm. And you can break the algorithm by doing something the simulation cannot keep up with mm. or process. Like Truman Show. When he started doing all that crazy shit he was doing, uh, when he started realizing what was going on, they couldn't even keep up with him. Eventually, it had to end. Same for Westworld. They couldn't keep up with him. Once they started doing things outside of the normality. I'm trying to um, see where that metaverse is going. Man. So the metaverse is going to be a physical thing. People are getting lost in the idea that they're about to put on spectacles in order to view the metaverse. And that is not where we're going. Um, holographic technology is right around the corner. And so is war. And they're going to have a lot of planned destruction. So is war? So is war. 2025 has already been predicted. We're going to war with China. Mm. And war is on the horizon. And they're going to plan a lot of destructive events so that they then can implement this holographic technology. So, for example, imagine if uh, I was to blow a hole in the side of... Um, uh, uh, a uh, central bank, all right? I'm just going to say it's a central bank. And it costs too much to fix it. We're now going to use a special material to kind of just cover it up and then use holographic technology to make it look better. Hmm. We're going to have drones that are going to be in the cities, that are going to be projecting. I mean, I, I want you to understand they have holographic technology that's going to be able to come out of this little light. This little light is going to be able to produce 50,000 little streaks right out of this little system. This is coming within the next two years. On a larger scale, these drones are going to have projectors that can project about 50,000 streams per unit. So now you're not going to be wearing real clothes no more probably put on some bullshit, but it's going to holographically project you wearing Gucci. It's going to holler. This is where we're going. It's going, we're going to be living in the metaverse. Now, mm. are we going to still be wearing uh smart wear to accelerate the experience? Like, for example, what if there's no holographic technology in the hood? Well, fuck that. I still need to experience my holographic reality. So, whoop, there we go. Now I'm putting my glasses on, and now I can see what the fuck I wanted to see. It's also going to have an AI assistant attached to it. So if you tell your AI assistant you want everyone that you come in contact with to have a red shirt on, that's what it's going to show you. Yeah, that's I, what it's going to I think they're going to get away. I think they're going to get away. Like, right now they're saying put the headphones and all that shit on. But I think eventually it's going to be like, you know what, just put this chip on, and you get to see all this shit like that. <laughs> It yeah, I'm mean, gonna shoot something in you like Total Recall. You remember Total Recall? Oh, I remember. I remember. It's an old Recall. ass movie. It's funny, like if you go watch all them old ass movies, it's like, it's like the shit that's going on now. Yeah, Robocop, the series. Yep. Yep. Really, really want to know some codes? Watch that shit right now. Man, that's what them robots moving better than Robocop could ever move. You see them, you see, man, they had a they had a new one. Cause like I said, I've been I'm going to school for cybersecurity. So they showed the robot uh -huh. at Boston Scientific, like back in the day when it, the first model, that shit could barely walk. 
Now they got that shit where that shit can jump up, like do parkour and shit. I saw it. It was. Cha-cha. I was like, God damn. It was crazy. Yeah, no, they're 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 running, they're running, they're run. What happened to all the gold? We gave it away. <laughs> they gave it away back in the day. And where'd it go? And he like, um, I thought they had a lot of it in like Fort Fort Knox or whatever. They got it. Where is it at? Inside of robots. Hmm. There are military men that have gone on record to say that below every major city is a fortress, per se. And in this fortress, this was originally created to, well, was repurposed to be fallout bunkers in the 50s, 60s. In the 70s, the rich folks kind of turned it over to like hide away from the public. In the 2000s, they thought the world was going to end. 2012 and came and went. They done wasted all their money retrofitting all these. You know, this shit looks incredible now. Marble down there on some of these places. So they're no longer using them as bunkers. So then the rich people said, well, we need to do something with them. This is then when, I'm not going to name different organizations, but different organizations offer to rent out their spaces or to lease out their spaces for in, uh, in for a long time. It's not a, a set time. And put robotic uh, or advanced, I won't even say robotic, advanced technology, the technology that they cannot have on the surface. And they can't have this technology, like, for example, in Area 51. What the hell? Uh, if they got a whole fleet of, of robots in Area 51, how is that helping when it's time to pop shit off? It's not. <laughs> they need to be exactly where they need to be. There's also elevators that go down to these areas in every major city in certain buildings. So it's theorized that when shit hits the fan, these things will come up out of the underground and will start hitting the streets. And no one's going to know where the fuck they came from. But they came from underground. And they've been there for a while. Mm. Yeah, I believe it. I know one of my homies, uh I can't say that. I ain't gonna say that on here. <laughs> I was gonna say, but what you uh I wanted you to talk about um I know I saw you on YouTube. Are you mostly on YouTube or on your other platforms too? YouTube. I'm usually on YouTube. Yeah, I, I talk about all kinds of stuff, bro. It's thrill interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I wanna say thank you for coming through politics with me, man. It was an honor. Pleasure, bro. My pleasure. I'm about to catch up with you in the future, man, and see what's going on. Let's do it. All right, you want to hit them with your social media and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If y'all want to check me out, uh, follow me at Q Reeves, C-U-E, uh, like to cue someone in, C-U-E-R-E-A-V-E-S. You can check me out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. You Google Q Reeves, it'll come up. Uh, my website, all that, Q Reeves, C-U-E-R-E-A-V-E-S. Appreciate right. you, bro. No doubt, man. Like I said, I'm gonna make sure I'm uh, um I'm already tuned, but I'm being more in tune, man. Make sure. Um, is there a certain day you come on, or how you how you doing it? It's kind of sporadic, <laughs> kind of okay. sporadic. But um, but kind of like playing. I kind of like tell people to play this game. Say that you feel in some type of way, and you're looking for some type of answer, some type of spiritual guidance. When I was doing these videos, they always told me they're not really in no order. They're going to come to people when they need to. So I did about 115 videos. So just randomly just going through one and just hitting that play, you'll be surprised how it hits right on time. That's what's up.